Hello and welcome to WTTW's first hand event, Chicago Teachers Disrupting Segregation Through Art in partnership with the Folded Map Project. My name is Tim Russell, Vice President of Community Engagement and Diversity, Equity and Inclusion for WTTW and WFMT. And I'm excited that you have joined us for this important conversation. WTTW is committed to producing and presenting trusted, best in class content fueled by distinctly Chicago sensibility. WTTW is essential to public discourse. We leverage PBS documentaries, WTTW original content, news and digital series to surface and spotlight people, ideas and stories behind the headlines. We have served as Chicago's window to the world and our purpose is to enrich lives, engage communities and inspire exploration. Now, before we get things going, I'd like to extend a very special thanks to the supporters of this project who you can see listed here. Without the generous support of these donors, sponsors, and WTTW members, First Hand would not have been possible. Now, let's watch the trailer for First Hand Segregation. As you look at the city, you can almost tell by the skyline, right? Where the money is, where the opportunity is. Segregation isn't just about people choosing to live in different spaces. It's about how resources are distributed. Segregation is deliberate when it's economically and racially driven. You got my body! It was very Mexican. There were some Puerto Ricans, but no black people. We are kind of pushed out of certain neighborhoods. They said, don't go past 47th Street. What they were really saying was, don't cross the street, because that's where black people live. They pretty much let you know that they really don't want you here. Every neighborhood should reflect what our city is about, and it's about everybody. How do we figure this out to at least become more participatory in the wealth that's being generated in our own neighborhood? We need to start building bridges between neighborhoods, between cultural groups. What a great sight. People who don't look like they would normally be hanging out, coming together. Go into different communities and break bread and take the time to understand that's how we heal. For my family, I want them to look at Chicago and see endless opportunities. Today's conversation will be moderated by Tanika Johnson and Dr. Maria Creason. Tanika is a photographer, social justice artist, and lifelong resident of Chicago's Southside neighborhood of Inglewood. She is also co-founder of the Inglewood Arts Collective and Resident Association of Greater Inglewood, which seeks to reframe the narrative of Southside communities and mobilize people and resources for positive change. Tanika's art is often explores urban segregation, documenting the nuances and richness of Black community to counter media depictions of Chicago's violence. Dr. Maria Creason has studied racial residential segregation and racial attitudes for 30 years and is the author with Kyle Crowder of the award-winning book, Cycle of Segregation, Social Processes and Residential Segregation which offers a new framework for understanding the cause of racial residential segregation. She's professor of sociology at the University of Illinois, Chicago, where she teaches, does research, and engage public audiences about these topics. Tanika is one of six experts who delivered a firsthand talk, providing context around the topic of segregation in Chicago, and Maria wrote WTTW's firsthand segregation discussion guide. Now, let's watch a video from WTTW's Chicago Tonight, which will explain what the original Folded Map project was and, that today, and how today's event is centered on an expansion of Folded Map, specifically bringing Folded Map to the classroom. Chicagoan Tanika Johnson is using photography to educate people about the disparities she's noticed within neighborhoods throughout the city. The Folded Map Project looks at gentrification and segregation with the help of side-by-side -side photos of two different neighborhoods with the same address on opposite ends of Chicago. Arts correspondent Angel Edo takes us on a tour around the city to see the impact of the project firsthand. Tanika Johnson wants to change misconceptions about certain neighborhoods in Chicago. So she created the Folded Map Project. 
Unfolded Map is a visual investigation of disparity and inequity in Chicago using its mapping system. So I have photographed addresses that are similar on the same streets, like 6720 North Ashland and 6720 South Ashland, and compared them. When people look at those photos, <laughs> they're able to see the difference in the sidewalks, the landscape, sometimes even just the streets themselves and the maintenance of the buildings. Johnson's project started with just that, photos. Soon, those photos turned into conversations. She began reaching out to what she refers to as map twins. The first iteration mm -hmm. of Folded Map um, just focused on the north and south side, specifically the neighborhoods that if you were to fold Chicago's map at its zero point would touch Inglewood. And so Inglewood was the south side neighborhood that I focused on because it's so large, which a lot of people don't know. It's like the third largest neighborhood in Chicago. And just like that, her first set of map twins were born. Inglewood resident Carmen Arnold Stratton quickly realized the city offers more than her neighborhood when Rogers Park resident Bridget O'Shaughnessy was describing her home. When she said that her neighborhood was a global mecca, I was like, oh, okay, I need to venture out more and not have that stigma of my neighbors that I grew up with, oh, we're not going there. The pair say their relationship has only grown since meeting. We have to show up for each other. And it, I feel like, you know, yes, there was the first moment when Carmen and I met, and that was a meaningful day. But to me, it's like, how else can I invest in her as a person? Because I think the more we know each other, the more we care. And the more we care, the more we're willing to fight for each other. Johnson says this developed empathy is one of the many goals of the project. The Folded Map project includes more than 10 sets of map and address twins depicted through both videos and photos. I had a chance to sit down with a second iteration of map twins, these two from the city's north and west sides. Johnson says they're the first pair to really talk about gentrification in the city. I realized when she said that the gentrification isn't the only process here that causes people to live separately and in a segregated way, but sort of happening as a result of economics more than anything. After visiting Joe Bristol's home in Logan Square, Garfield Park resident Q Bila said he realized he had more control over the changes within his neighborhood than he realized. You know, it made me want to just look more into real estate and investigate and see if that's something that I want to do and, you know, can do financially. It's not necessarily about like being pushed out or, um, you know, white people coming to take over the neighborhood. Um, you got to kind of take um, initiative yourself to learn and educate yourself about what's going on, you know, and then maybe if you want a piece of your neighborhood, you can buy it. All right, so with that introduction to the, the original Folded Map, I'm excited today to share with you one of Folded Map's many expansions, which is, as Tim said, bringing Folded Map into the classroom. We were inspired and anxious to do this because teachers have been asking Tanika for almost since Folded Map was born to, for some kind of curriculum and teaching resources. And these are teachers of all kinds, elementary level, middle school, high school, undergraduate, graduate, professional schools, and, and all kinds of subjects social studies, art, math, science, English, health, government, urban planning, dentistry, medical school, public health, sociology, music, poetry, it goes on and on and on. We think the appeal of using folded map in the classroom is because it started off as an art project. And one of the powers of art as a platform for teaching about lots of topics, not just art, is that it levels the playing field. Art allows every person or student in this case to connect personally to the issue or topic. And each student is an expert in their own experience. Then because of the specific content of folded map and its focus on segregation and systemic forces, it creates an opportunity for students to extend beyond um, their personal experience. Folded map provides an entree into how structural forces or society has shaped that personal experience. And it does so with an overarching message of hope. As one teacher who wrote to us about folded map, 
wrote, said to us, I teach about Chicago history often and the subject of our divided city is addressed frequently. I have most appreciated the folded map project in my own life because of the hopefulness that surrounds this idea. And I would love to bring that into our classroom. Another made this important distinction. The fact that it makes explicit something that everyone seems to abstractly take for granted, the contrast in the North and South side experience of life. Importantly, the fact that it does this in a, in a celebration of the people as opposed to a, in a harsher way. So we're thrilled today to publicly share for the first time our sneak peek at the folded map curriculum, which you can see is so visually beautifully portrayed on this slide. Um, our first installment of that curriculum is geared to sort of the seventh to 12th grade, although I have college students that I think would love it as well, and builds on the 30 minute animated video, animated movie, the folded map movie that Tanika has created. There's going to be a student guide with a, an array of activities and a teacher's guide full of additional resources. The curriculum and movie will be freely available to teachers everywhere. If you want to be one of the first to hear about it, hopefully our chat is going to work and we'll have, um, we'll drop the link for a sign up sheet. You can um, share your email address and we'll let you know when it's available. So for our panel today, we're going to share with you two different models that have emerged among the amazing educators of Chicagoland who have adopted Folded Map already. In model number one, teachers have told us over the years that they've had ideas about how to use Folded Map in their classroom as a lesson or an activity. As one teacher told us, I teach eighth grade American history with a social justice lens. Folded Map is a perfect local resource to inform and awaken my students. And another shared that Folded Map was a brilliant illustration of income inequality and racial segregation in Chicago and of how art can become a form of civic engagement. So our first panelists today followed this model and used Folded Map to create a lesson for their class. We're thrilled to invite them to this conversation because they are the real experts. Tanika is going to lead them in conversation about how they have brought Folded Map into their classrooms and used art as a platform for disrupting segregation. We have with us today UIC Urban Health Pre-College Program Director Joy Valentine and Evanston Township High School Social Studies teacher Rick Cardis. Tanika, take it away. And if we can have uh, media cues six and seven, that would be great. Hi, Rick and Joy. How are you? I'm doing, doing well. Good. Doing Hi. well. Hi, Tanika. How are you? I'm good. I'm so excited to have you all here and to just get right into the conversation because I have uh, been introduced to you all through Folded Map in a couple of different ways, but you all are both amazing educators, and I really want to have you all share with us how did you use Folded Map in your classroom, and what activities did you have students do? We have a lot of educators um, in the room, participating in the Zoom, and they're actually commenting in the chat. So they're really excited to hear what you all have to say. But, but yeah, just share with us how you all use Folded Map because it's you creative teachers that really inspired Maria and I to, to wanna turn the project into uh, a curriculum. Whichever one of you all wants to go, just a conversation, whoever wants to start. Go ahead, yeah. Joy. Thank you. So I'll begin. Um, I wanted to have my students, and I work with a team of English language arts teachers, I wanted to have my students make sense of segregation. As an educator and a researcher, a doctoral student, I also wanted to wanted students to take a look at where they live and I wanted students to understand racism. And one of the things that I found out is that where students, their social spatial identity, where students live is a big part of who they are and how they understand racism. And of course, many of our Chicago students did not, the students who I teach did not understand racism, did not understand segregation. So folded map, was the great opportunity for me to help my students make sense of what's happening, not only in their neighborhoods, but in their schools. And one of the things that I really appreciate about Folded Map, Tanika, is how your brainchild came to be. 
And we have so many students who travel from their home communities to their school communities. Mm -hmm. And many of our students travel an hour or more just to get from home to school. Actually, the data show that 25% of high school students in America go to a school that is not in their neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So folded map was near and dear to the hearts of the students who I work with at UIC because we are a commuter program. We work with high school students who come to the campus during the summer and on Saturdays. And many of them shared their similar stories when they found out exactly how your idea folded map came to be. So um, I was interested in how Chicago adolescents recognize segregation and talk about their experiences with segregation. And the question that emerged after that, once we had the conversation with the students, I always like to know, what did you get from this? What did you glean from this? So the question for me is what did Folded Map teach? And one of the resounding answers that I got from students is that, okay, it taught me that Chicago's bigger than I thought it was because a lot of students didn't realize that Ashland, like streets like Ashland, Halstead, Western run the whole, all the way, um, all, the way mm -hmm. all the way. They didn't realize that. And um, another thing that they learned was, um, especially with the map twins, as we delved into that, the whole property values, um, North versus South. Mm -hmm. That was, that was a huge um, question, mm -hmm. a big, why is this like this? And um, because we had also had a unit on redlining, they were very interested in understanding how these property values came to be so different from one side of the city to the other. So the questions that arose and then making the art, turning this into art, we also, the language, the language arts teachers who I work with, we also did um, spoken word. We encourage students to write about it. We encourage students to not only write, but to perform their poetry. And um, I'm not, I don't think the viewers can see the um, middle slide here, but I just like to share what one of our students wrote when she when she was asked to think about folded map in connection to what we do at the urban health early outreach program which is social determinants of health and she wrote a poem i won't read all of it the beginning of her poem is dear social determinants of health you may determine my wealth and how marketable my neighborhood is but you will not gentrify my mind you may rank my capability to get from point A to point B, but you cannot rank the ABCs of my creativity. And this is one of our 11th grade students. And the poem is a multi multiple stanza poem. And I'm certain that she will have this published one day. And it was this poem that was the culminating event for our folded map project. In fact, she was the last person to present this poem once all of the students did give their thoughts and their ideas even about folded map. The other big thing that came out of this was the number of students who we taught who talked about traveling from their homes to their school. And one student said that in her travel, and if you can see the image of the red line there, she travels an hour and a half to get to school every day. And she said she decided to make her route to school even longer, about an hour and 45 minutes, just in order to avoid the red line. So Folded Map Project, I thank you so very much, Tanika. Our students really got a lot of knowledge, not only about Chicago, but we are big on teaching identity. And so this, this project allowed students to take a look at themselves, profile their neighborhoods and come away with a deeper understanding of segregation, why it is and how the government set this thing up to be like it is. Thank you.
Joy, you're going to make me cry. <laughs> yeah. Wait till you see this student's complete poem. You will <laughs> cry. Oh, oh, my goodness. Um, Rick, I'm not saying you have to beat that. But <laughs> well, it's, just, yeah. Oh. It's not a competition. So <laughs> that's right. <laughs> um, but I, I mean, I was nodding through a lot of that. I think that in my students in Evanston, you know, that some of the same reactions to learning about um, housing values and, you know, thinking about the size of the city and the, you know, why do they name streets on the north side the same as the south side? So just a lot of these things that sort of geography that the students don't often think about it kind of broaden their horizons a little bit. And so I, I teach um, AP US history and civics. And, you know, it, this has obvious connections in US history courses, um, because it's, you know, it's an important part of our history, teaching about redlining and systemic racism and segregation and and that sort of thing. But the the way I was excited to use about use it in my civics class this year was, you know, we we teach civics, we focus a lot on what we call civics in action. So trying to help the students understand different ways that they can be activists within their communities and, you know, a really broad definition of community. Um, it can be, you know, what we think about in, in Evanston or Chicagoland. It can also be like the communities that they're part of with, with friends and clubs and sports and that sort of thing. But the, the focus, you know, we learned the history and, you know, on the screen are, are a few of the things that, that we did in my classes this year. Um, we learn about redlining. Um, students are fascinated to look at their, the old redlining maps from the 1930s and see how like, their neighborhood shows up today. And, you know, it's really... I, when we talk about the redlining maps, I, I say over and over and over that these are maps from 1930s, the 1930s, but the students really um, identify with them today and their, their identity is often affected by the ratings of their neighborhoods from nearly 100 years ago. But the, the exciting thing for me about using this in civics class is that I try to focus on different types of activism that people engage in in communities. And so um, artists as activists uh, is a really important thing to consider because, you know, a lot of times in traditional civics classes, you think of, you know, being involved in political systems and like directly, you know, I'm, I'm going to go speak before the city council, but um, showing ways that artists um, can can open people's minds to things. And just since I heard about the Folded Map Project, I'd probably five or six years ago now, um, I've just been fascinated by the concept of, of how you can fold a map and bring people together and learn about their different experiences. And so I teach your work, Tonika, when we talk about um, Titus Kafar and Ai Weiwei and Shamsia Hassani and all these people around the world who use art to, to activate our minds in ways that we might not other activate them. And then just the last thing that I'll say that, that really is meaningful or has been meaningful for, for my students is, you know, in the video, um, Tanika, you tell your story of going to high school. And so my high school students just um, identify with that immediately. And, mm. and you can see on the screen, the Venn diagram, one of my students just looking at, at their lives, your life and where they intersect and where they're different. And it's just a really great way to get students to, to identify with this history see it in the present day and start to think about things that they might be able to do about it. Oh my gosh. I thank you all for, for valuing my project enough to bring it to your students. But what's so beautiful to me is um, how it's being applied to help all of your students understand how they have been impacted by segregation, how their neighborhoods have been impacted and like unconsciously shifting the idea that segregation is only something that's happening in black neighborhoods, you know, cause that's that's what we tend to think. And, and, and that's really one of the things that I wanted my project to 
to unconsciously do and to have you all directly do it by Mm -hmm. teaching it to your entire classroom to show them we're all impacted by segregation is is just an expansion of of my artistic intent that that I'm just happy to share with you all so so thank you so much for for valuing it and and also sharing to all of our educators here that's tuned in the amazing ways that you've incorporated it in the classroom um and I know we have more to talk about so I'm gonna allow Maria to introduce our other guests <laughs> Yeah, so now we're going to shift, I promised, two different models for how people have used folded map in their classrooms. So we're going to shift to the second model that is not, um, the first model was about sort of individual lessons, and you can see really transformative ones. The second model seeks to replicate the folded map twin concept using schools as twins instead of residents. As one teacher wrote us, not one of these teachers, but another teacher who sort of was reflecting on what folded map could do. It's about making connections between real folks, kids especially, and getting them to talk to each other, share ideas, understand the city and what makes it what it is, and getting to the core of how structures have kept it segregated. So this is pretty much a perfect description of what our next set of panelists did. I'm thrilled to introduce our first folded map twin schools, the Montessori School of Inglewood and West Loop's Montessori Academy of Chicago. Representing this twin partnership are Ms. Unica from the Montessori School of Inglewood, Ms. Bridget, and Ms. Jennifer from the Montessori Academy of Chicago. So Tanika, you can take it away and we could queue up uh, media number eight. Hi, all of you all. Um, Jennifer, I really just wanna start with you. You know, why was this so important for you to create a Montessori twin partnership? Because it was really this this whole relationship and this expansion of Folded Map in this particular way was kicked off with your excitement and interest. And trust me, so many teachers have contacted me wanting to do school twins, but I told them, you know, I had to put it back on them. Like, I, I would love to assist and be part of it, but it really has to come from you. <laughs> it has to come from you all. Um, but you really just like help make it happen. Why did you want to do it? Yeah, you know, once I heard about the project and watched your film and and I just thought, you know, we're a Montessori school and the Montessori school of Englewood, those students have so much in common with our students. They're all Montessori kids. And, and so I was excited about brainstorming with you and, and with, with others to figure out a way that we could bring these kids together and have them really focus on their similarities and what they have in common. And, and I really do believe that starting with children is the best way for us to, to break down barriers and to try to break down prejudice and segregation. And the schools are not that far apart. And so um, once we brought the art teachers into the mix, then, then I felt like all of that brainstorming uh, just took off. And, uh, yeah. and the idea of, again, using art uh, to be able to, to have these kids be, be doing projects simultaneously at the two different schools and then bringing those middle schoolers together so that they could get to know each other. Um, it just took off from there. And really the excitement that, that our students had um, from the Montessori Academy of Chicago to get to know the middle school kids from the Montessori School of Englewood, it was fantastic. They, they from the day one, when when they got to know each other via Zoom, they were sending each other a little video postcards back and forth and, and getting to know one another before they met in person, which we couldn't do right away because of the pandemic. Um, but but they immediately wanted to get to know these other kids. And so so I feel like starting with the children is really the best way to to realize some of the goals that we all share. Thank you for sharing that. And for all of our teachers tuned in, um, there was a, a nice little extensive engagement 
we did uh, with the staff and the two schools before the amazing art teachers, Unika and Bridget, uh, came up with the idea of engaging the students specifically through art. And I saw you shaking your head, agreeing, Unika, about a couple of things Jennifer was saying and you too, Bridget. So why don't you all tell us um, what you actually did with the students and what started to click and, and, and lay out the lessons, how you all started it off, because again, I just want to remind you that, you know, the educational community is very turned up in the chat. So they're really excited <laughs> to know how you all did this. Yeah. So we began by having our students watch the video and then we had a discussion after that. Um, once students kind of had a, a moment to react and kind of mull over uh, the content of the video, then we had students actually meet each other virtually, um, like Jennifer said, with virtual postcards. So they started by sending each other videos, kind of introducing themselves. Um, and then we started building. Uh, these buildings that we made were made out of recycled materials, and we were building our communities. So we made 3D dioramas uh, with these recycled materials. We had students kind of observe their neighborhood and kind of analyze it and then choose a building to focus on. They then started building these um, buildings. And then while one school is doing that, the other school was doing it simultaneously. So that was a really good way for them to kind of reflect on their community, appreciate their community, and then eventually compare and contrast their communities between the two different schools. So after they started becoming familiarized with each other with our virtual postcards, uh, Miss Unica actually invited our schools to meet in person once the pandemic regulations started kind of easing up a little bit, which was extremely exciting because the students were really looking forward to meeting each other. Um, Miss Unica invited us to meet at the Cultural Mu Museum, the Cultural Center with a K, and I would love her to kind of talk about that because that's kind of her baby. It's a <laughs> beautiful place. So, sure. So yeah, the, it was a beautiful experience, and the build up before, like Bridget was saying, was just so powerful for them to exchange the videos and pictures. Uh, beforehand, the students were super proud and super excited to create them and share them. And we had the uh, Zoom Zoom calls and things like that. Our students were excited just even watching the film because they saw their community. Um, our school is in Inglewood. There was so many Inglewood shots there. So um, we are fortunate um, enough to have this uh, relationship with the Culture Museum. And the main artist there is actually an Inglewood, was an Inglewood resident, grew up in Inglewood. So it was a beautiful experience to bring all of the students together to kind of take a look at just the cultural art and how artist collaborations even beyond um, the borders of, of segregation in the city um, can come together. And they were able to create their own creations with several artists. And it was just a beautiful, wonderful experience to have them come together for the first time and create. And you got to see how much uh, in common those middle school students have. You know, um, they were sharing little TikTok dances and, you know, just to be able to just be kids beyond the borders and barriers that exist in Chicago. And the interesting thing is they really um, understood, especially in the movie when, when, when the map broke down into colors and those students in Inglewood who have traveled throughout the city, they were like, oh, we did, we've been there, but we didn't recognize that these, that Chicago was so separated. Um, and again, just like the adults and the older students, they were shocked at the property value, you know, like why, why is our neighborhood? And they, they kind of dove into under, wanting to understand why the, why things are the way they are, why segregation exists. And it led into so many other discussions about mm -hmm. how taxes work and uh, just why the history 
um, of the city and the history of Inglewood and the how things are unfair. You got to see children, even the uh, lower elementary, sorry, upper, upper elementary, just was so engaged by the film and so taken in. It's just, just the whole experience of being able to co connect and communicate with people outside of their comfort zone <laughs> was uh, just beautiful. It was a power, it's just a powerful experience. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I swear my heart is so big right now because I never I never thought about you know as an artist you just want to get a project an idea out of your head and you know what it means to you as an individual and maybe to you know your own social network but to just hear how you all have contributed and, and breathe new life into my project um, and how your students are you know, being informed by it just really means a lot to me. And I just want to thank all of you all. And I would love to bring Rick and Joy back into the conversation because I also want to ask all of you all, um, you know, not only what do you think your students got out of the experience or activities or just learning about Folded Map, but also you all like how how has this helped or you know influenced or changed how you all are able to talk and teach about these larger systemic issues to your students um you know that's what's really interesting to me i don't i don't know if that was a gap before, or if there was, you know, I'm, I'm just very curious about how it's um, helped you as a educator. And if seeing your students go through the experience of engaging with Folded Map after you introduced it to them, like how has that um, impacted you, you know, seeing them write their comments, create these poems, like engage with these larger issues in a in a more personal way that you felt like maybe possibly was a gap. So just share with us um, a response to any of that. I know I just threw a lot at you, but <laughs> <laughs> that, that's just what was going on in my mind as you all were talking about um, all of your wonderful lessons. Um, I'll start. So with our program, the University of Illinois Chicago Urban Health Early Outreach Program, our focus is social determinants of health. Folded Map Project gave us a visual. Each of our program opening days, our teachers tell our students, your zip code, and this research bears this out, your zip code is more of a predictor of your health than your genetic code. So that's something that our students hear all the time. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until Folded Map that they were actually able to, as I said earlier, make sense of mm. why this is, but they were able to just take a look at and see, okay, social determinants of health, there is this interrelatedness to segregation, racism, why my grandma has to go to the pharmacy so much because of the things that are happening in um, the in um, in her neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, uh, one of the things, one of four or five lines of the poem that the student wrote talks about um, living in a food desert and how that affects the health. So, mm -hmm. short answer: folded map gave a visual to our students so that they could see, mm. okay, this is how Chicago is. This is, these neighborhoods look like this and these neighborhoods like th look like this and there's a difference. And as one of my students said, who actually used to live in Inglewood and then moved to closer to the UIC neighborhood, mm. um, she said to me, I can now walk to places whereas before my sister and I we're only within the confines of our yard. We couldn't go anywhere else. So um, Folded Map gave them a visual, gave them a deeper understanding. And also um, as um, students shared with me, 
segregation, there are symbols of segregation, there are sounds to segregation, and there are also um, experiences. All of this they shared in their narratives, their stories. They talked about the sounds, the symbols, as they, as they talked about their stories of segregation. Anyone else, uh, Unika? Yeah, I definitely uh, wanted to chime in. Um, two two things that kind of rang out for the for the students. One of the most powerful moments um, was that last field trip at uh, at the university, and when we did the roundtable discussion and. To see, and uh, the visuals kind of showed it, the difference between the South side and the North side from the children's perspective. That activity was very powerful. The other part that struck me is the similarities that they all had as city residents. You know, it was like, well, it, you know, our neighborhood kind of sinks and, you know, and it was on both sides. So you saw some of the, you know, the North side is calm and the South side is violent, but then it, it'll be like, but yeah, but there's still loud music on, on our block and, you know, the garbage is, is piled up. So, and the littering is bad and, and other good things as well. Like we enjoy going to the park. So I think that, that to me, because sometimes we look at, the aspect of segregation is, is things are so separate. But for me, one thing that struck out was the children kind of brought like, yeah, but we're all Chicagoans. And as Chicagoans, there's certain things that just happen in Chicago that we all can kind of relate to. And yeah. those moments kind of made them bond a little bit closer. Like, okay, we, we kind of are experiencing uh, the same thing. Um, the, other, the other thing as a teacher, that I really enjoyed and want to say thank you to the Mac Montessori School is, uh, you know, in, being in Inglewood, there are certain things that happen in Inglewood. And, and we all know that sometimes the violence can get a little out of hand. And so sometimes at our school, we do have lockdowns. And I remember like certain times where I was like, hey guys, I can't meet right now. We're in the middle, you know, but in the understanding and compassion that was uh, shown and shared um, just being able to kind of talk about the different educational experiences and being open even with the youth talking about um, sharing some of those things with the students um, and then having an open dialogue as in terms of like how the schools are different. We had, uh, I don't know, maybe 60 middle school students, whereas the other school had significantly, you know, so those types of conversations, like, why is that? It just opened doors um, of other ways of thinking and other aspects that our students and the other students didn't know. And I think that everybody came out of the experience just way more educated, uh, fulfilled about other aspects of life, other parts of the city, other parts of Illinois. Um, and it was just a really great experience. <laughs> I love that they all realize we're all city kids. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're all from the big city. <laughs> Bridget, Rick, Jennifer, did you all want to? Yeah, there's one thing that struck me was um, both of the times with the original, the first field trip when we went to the Culture Museum at the very beginning, uh, you know, there were kind of groups of kids just staying with their own friends and, you know, Miss Unica just said, okay, you guys, look, the reason we're here is to get to know each other. You're not going to stick with your same friends from your own school. So mix it up, mix it up. And she just started, you know, introducing people to other kids. And we all kind of walked around and, and, uh, and kind of integrated those children and, and helped them to get to know one another. And it was immediate. As soon as we introduced them to kids from the other school, they just all started talking and they all started, um, you know, then, oh, let me introduce you to my other friend. And, and it was just beautiful to see how, how that, that reluctance at the beginning to kind of reach out went away so quickly. Mm -hmm. And, and it was just beautiful to see how, um, how they all got along and they all enjoyed being a part of this project and they all ended up uh, learning from each other. Mm. Bridget, Rick. Uh, yeah, I just want to kind of second that. Um, and kind of talk about how at the beginning of this project, we really kind of focused on how this was an incredible example of like creative problem solving um, and how artists are so uniquely capable of doing that, of coming up with 
solutions or disruptions that people maybe haven't thought about before. Um, and Tonika, I think you did a beautiful job of that. And it was really important for the kids to see that. But as an educator, I think the way that we approached this was obviously this is an extremely serious issue that we're approaching, but I feel like the students approached it with so much joy. Mm -hmm. I think uh, sometimes it can get like purely somber. And when the kids were together, there was a lot of joy that was involved in the work. And that was really inspiring and really hopeful. So mm -hmm. it's really powerful. And I, I think that that's the one of the things that my students got out of it. Again, I think I said earlier, it's just the opportunity to identify with your story, Tonika, um, and using it in the classroom, using the video in the classroom and hearing, you know, how you were thinking about this idea when you're in high school and not sure how it was going to come out and be expressed. So that was was really helpful for the students. And this was part of a, a bigger discussion that we had a, about segregation and, and systemic racism and housing issues, which is a big topic in Evanston um, and has been for the last few years because of the reparations program that the, the city has implemented there. And so the students had lots of feelings about the, the type of program that Evanston was, was implementing, but the so we talked about that and the next thing we did then was we watched your video because it was a way for them to see you know how you can take these feelings that you have about a topic that is about your home about your your hometown and then express it in different ways and so that's a seed that's planted um we'll see how that that develops over the course of the year when students start thinking about how they want to engage engage in um, civic action and that sort of thing I think that's a perfect lead in for a question we have from the audience. Alexi was asking, and this goes to any of you who want to weigh in, what advice would you give to future teachers for incorporating art and activism in the classroom? Furthermore, how do you encourage students to continue to engage in art and activism outside the classroom? I'd love to answer that. <laughs> so yes, um, especially the fact that you are also an artist as well <laughs> as an educator. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I, I think like the first thing is identify what your passion is and what you love. And um, that's something that happens at a very early age. Um, and, you know, art is a tool and Tanika you've done an excellent job of incorporating and, and get, melding that together um, for me my art artistry is my, my voice first and foremost and then visual art as well and I think when students understand that they have a voice and that you can have an opinion and you can use this thing that you are passionate about to voice that opinion and they learn that early just as as children what are you passionate about and you may not even be good I know when I first started singing my mother was like you should be a background singer <laughs> <laughs> no. you know and it, I spent many a day in my closet built Whitney Houston uh, <laughs> in my parents nerves but eventually it sounded like something um and and but all of that time just having those open dialogues that folded map I, it gives the opportunity to have and allowing them, um, like Joy said, to, to voice your opinion, like, okay, take that idea and make it into something um, beautiful, make it into something that will inspire people. And then don't be afraid to share that and show that. So I think just, just having the environment in a classroom setting to be able to have a, a safe space to say, you are allowed to say whatever you want, of course, within reason, <laughs> um, but do it in a creative way. And then I think it's so important that children see adults being creative and being artists. I, I sing and draw for my students as much as possible um, because I know that that ignites um, inspiration, you know, and then they, they are going to mimic what 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 they do so Tanika even seeing the children seeing you from Inglewood like oh my god she's from Inglewood and she made a movie um, you know I love and, that they call it a movie <laughs> yeah, you know, that's it. And, and they were so engaged even the little ones were just so engaged and asking questions and 
honestly sharing the different aspects of art because even I had to like, okay, this is a movie. This is art. This is the way that you express yourself. So when, when, so after seeing the movie, we were like, okay, now it's time to make some um, video postcards for the other. They just had a ball, like, okay, we're going to be little Tanikas and we're going to <laughs> edit it. So they were adding all type of edits and stuff like that. But it took them seeing somebody do it first and then they mimicked it. So I think just, I, making sure that we identify it and just help them to have those conversations and giving them a platform within school to be able to say, you, this is your chance. This is your voice. Go for it. Do it. <laughs> mm. um, I agree. And I agree with everything Uniqua said. And um, for the question um, about how, how teachers can do this with students, first of all, activism has to be activated. Everybody does not know that they have a bit of activism within. Some people do, but for those students who do not know, activism has to be activated. And as an, edu as an educator, the onus is yours to ask the questions. You have to ask students questions. Mm. Ask them questions. Ask them questions that are going to have them give answers that guide them to know themselves even better. It's all, activism is about identity. If you don't know who you are, you cannot be, be, you cannot be an effective activist. You have to know your identity. So my advice to um, teacher candidates, future teachers, practicing educators, go into the classroom with the questions, ask students, just a simple question, how do you define yourself? How do you see yourself? And then connecting to Folded Map, what do you see in your community? Some of the questions that the curriculum asks, what do you like about your community? What would you like to change about your community? If you could be a change agent, if you could do this. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing that the Folded Map film does and that we as educators have to do, we have to make certain that students know places within their neighborhoods as well as outside of their neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. So as Uniqua said, that compare contrast thing can happen. So that if I see that this is in my neighborhood, but I see something else that's in another neighborhood, mm -hmm. how can I make these changes in my neighborhood? Because it, can, it, it starts small. Yeah. It started small with folded map. It was in the head of Tanika. It came out on all of these rides from Inglewood to school and back. So activism has to be activated. I would say teachers ask questions and let students know what you're thinking too. And the last thing that I'll say is you, when you do these things with your students, you also have to, when you ask these questions of your students, also answer the questions and let students know what you're thinking too. Ah, uh, yes. That's an important part. And Maria and I are so adamant about the teacher's edition um, also being a reflective experience for educators as well, and not just something to help students guide them through the experience, but but also as you all know, you know, this this um reflection needs to happen in all Chicagoans, you, and especially like our educators, because they're individuals that may or may not be um, deeply connected or familiar with the experiences of these, you know, city kids or <laughs> or or the suburban students, uh, youth. But yeah, it, we want the teachers' edition um, to also allow the educators to reflect on that themselves. And did Rick or Bridget, um, I see you. I, I know some of your gestures now, Rick. So I know you want to say something. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, one of the questions I ask my students, so, you know, being in Evanston, um, Evanston, I think is similar in a lot of ways um, to Lane Tech where you really have students coming from all over the city to this place. And, and I know there was a, st a statistic in the chat earlier about really for many young people, their schooling experience is segregated. Um, and so 
I was trying to think like, well, how, how is Evanston similar to Chicago geographically? And, and I asked the students that, like, if you were going to do a folded map project um, just in Evanston, like, how would you try to represent the geographical makeup of Evanston and, you know, our fifth ward, right, right where the high school is and Evanston is the, the traditional black neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, the students recognize um, ways that that community is underserved and, but then like there's the community around it and it's just, it's not the bright lines of segregation are not as significant in Evanston as they are maybe in Chicago, but just the students were able to think about different ways that like, well, how could we fold a map in Evanston and have some of these same experiences? And I think it, that's why the art part of it is so useful is it, it makes students and it draws out of them different ways that they can conceptualize things and, and think about things. And one of the other things that was, that is in the, the, the teacher's guide is there's the little check boxes, um, like, who who are your friends at school? Who are your friends in your sports and clubs? Who are your friends at your your church or synagogue or mosque? Um, and um, who are your friends like that you're you you go home with and that come to your home? And um, just for the students, I really have to think about that. You know, I, I think a lot of times in Evanston, people think, oh, it's a diverse community, and so I have diverse experiences or whatever that means. But when you really break it down on those levels. Mm -hmm. um, it, it makes students think in a different way. And so again, your story, Tanika, it, it, I think it, it activates a lot of thoughts in their heads. And then when they apply it to themselves and to their own experiences, it's really powerful. Mm. Uh, clearly we could go on and on, um, but we are close to our end time. And I do want to take a moment to let everyone know who's joining us that if you're interested in signing up to receive the announcement of the curriculum when it is launched you can I believe access the link in the chat and additionally um, I do want to just bring Maria into the conversation she is Definitely a <laughs> longtime educator, uh, my folded map nonprofit curriculum partner. Um, and, and I do want you to just share how this, you know, makes you feel. These are all educators who, you know, have used the folded map curriculum draft and this is one of your passions as the expansion of folded map how, how does it feel for you to hear all of these enriching ways that mm -hmm. these brilliant educators have used and been inspired um, and are anxious to get the curriculum the official curriculum Yes, it's it's a dream come true to hear to see Rick put up these Venn diagrams that we sort of cooked up <laughs> and to see that they actually worked and and really the idea of that Venn diagram was born at the field trip where we had the twins come together and it worked so well with the you know we did it on a chalkboard with the old fashioned way and just like it's just been so exciting to put this together in this really authentic and organic way getting this feedback and I feel like this was kind of a focus group experience right here <laughs> um, and I hope that you know I just my hope is that your stories and your examples inspire any of the other teachers all the teachers in the audience um, or the parents even mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sort of thinking back to the the field trip at UIC when the students were really pressed to sort of say some of the stereotypes they had of different parts of Chicago and, and we sort of said, well, where are you getting this from? And what do you think needs to change? And so many of the students said, I think my parents need to stop talking about these places in this way. <laughs> so <laughs> I just think, so some of this, if, if you're not a Smart. teacher and you're watching this, you know, there's a role, the parents are our first teachers. And I think our yeah. parents can be also learning from these experiences. So I'll stop. No, thank you for that. And I want to thank you all for joining us not only in the chat but our panelists and with that can you believe it is time joy rick bridget unica jennifer okay we did it we did it it wasn't that bad was it 
It was just a nice little <laughs> recorded combo, you know, with a few people, you know, joining us in the chat. But yeah, we did it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this was uh, such a great conversation. Thank you to Nika and Maria for moderating today's conversation. And you, Nika, Bridget, Jennifer, Joy, and Rick, for your insight. You know, historically, art has been a critical foundation of the history of protest and struggle to achieve equity in the United States and across the globe. Whether music, poems, paintings, or other forms of creative expressions, art has been at the core of efforts to express emotion, communicate difficult concepts, spur action, and change what seems impossible. Art has been particularly important in illustrating and helping to facilitate how people understand what segregation is. Yet art remains underutilized. I hope today's event illustrate how art can facilitate insights, observations, and strategies to address segregation and achieve equity. Again, thank you to the Folded Map Project for your partnership. And please visit wttw.com slash firsthand to explore all seasons of firsthand uh, in which we looked at gun violence, coronavirus, poverty, and now segregation through the eyes of Chicagoans. And finally, please visit wttw.com slash events or wfmt.com slash events for upcoming events. Thank you all for joining us and look forward to seeing you next time. Take care. <laughs>